The fourth item of business is proposal four in our proxy statement, which is a proposal regarding an EEO policy risk report, which was brought by one of our stockholders. The representative of the proponent of the stockholder proposal, Mr. Scott Shepard, will have three minutes to pre present the pr proposal. Would Mr. Shepard please introduce himself in the proposal? Good morning. I'm Scott Shepard of the National Center for Public Policy Research, and I move proposal number four, which seeks to increase diversity within the Twitter community. Presently, Twitter policy rejects discrimination under the explicit categories of gender, race, national origin, sexual orientation, gender identity or expression, religion, age, and disability. We make a very simple request. Extend that policy to include protections against viewpoint discrimination. Twitter career page declares, all voices welcome, all voices needed. Open platform, open workplace. Healthy conversation is open and honest. At Twitter, everyone speaks their mind, even when it's an unpopular opinion. That's because we respect truth and trust each other enough to make space for disagreement and debate. But the way to welcome and protect all voices and ensure that everyone speaks their minds is to safeguard people of all viewpoints from discrimination. This requires an enforceable prohibition against viewpoint discrimination. But Twitter refuses to take that step and asks you as shareholders to support them in that refusal. In its opposing statement, the company asserts that it need not add viewpoint to its uh, non-discrimination policy because it makes clear to applicants we will not discriminate on the basis of any legally protected status. But it fails to note that it explicitly lists ways in which it will not discriminate that are not required by law in some American and foreign jurisdictions. In other words, it's willing to supplement the legally required minimum for categories when it cares to do so. From these passages on Twitter's own website, we can only conclude that the company wishes to pretend to care about companies' free expression while still wanting to be able to police and sanction unpopular speech on the sly. This impression is confirmed by regular reports that Twitter actually does police and sanction speech of which it disapproves. And this adds to the general impression of Silicon Valley employees that those with uh, viewpoints other than those which dominate Northern California actively face discrimination. Pretending to protect all viewpoints while covertly policing those of large swathes of potential employees and customers carries great risk. Risk to market share, to reputation, and to public perception. And the risk to Twitter is even greater as its entire business model rests on a special exemption from libel and disparagement laws that applies to Twitter exactly insofar as it is a neutral transmitter of communications rather than an active and partisan publisher. A failure to remain actively and aggressively neutral with regard to viewpoint will and should endanger that special legal privilege without which Twitter would collapse. Twitter's future depends on its commitment to maintain viewpoint neutrality throughout its operations. Our proposal provides the tool that Twitter needs to achieve that end. We urge all shareholders to vote for proposal number four and in favor of protections against viewpoint discrimination. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Shepard, for your comments. For the reasons detailed in our opposition statement, including a, included in a proxy statement, our board has, believes that this proposal is not in the best interest of Twitter or our stockholders and recommends a vote against the proposal. For further information, please see our opposition statement. I would now like to call the vote on proposal four. 